so I have four on this door to keep it tight and it doesn't rattle. She brought me back a present, so I've modeled the present this morning. The compartment, and I've got the temperature sensor right at the inverter, so it's the hottest part of the rig. The compartment did not heat up near as much as I anticipated it going to. So I'm down underneath the front nose. There's a nose jack, there's a battery box, spare tire. Here's the hole that comes through the floor. So much easy because I can just do it from anywhere and I don't have to point the remote at a thing. And I can control it. I can set a timer with it. I can have it come on at a certain time of day and a certain time and go off a certain time of night. Wake up. Step into the world outside. The future never looks so bright. Can't you hear it calling us? Let go Leave all of your cares behind You never know where you might find Sunny days are coming up Dreaming to... <laughs> I just want to show everybody real quick One Blair got me a present She went to the beach this weekend Or the last couple of days She brought me back a present So I've modeled the present this morning But it's chilly outside It's like 40 something degrees It's warming up now But Three hours ago you modeled Oh yeah but I've been in the same <laughs> same clothes ever since I got up this morning. I took Piper out. So I like to do grounding in the morning, putting my bare feet on the grass outside and some cold therapy and some morning sunlight on the skin. So that's why I'm dressed this way. But this person over here has a beanie, a shirt, and all the things on. Fleece lined leggings. And socks, I have all the lotions. nothing on. <laughs> Except for my cool flamingo shorts. If you were not aware, we did a big lithium battery upgrade, uh, an inverter upgrade, rewire the trailer so we can run all the things on battery if we need to. And I got a question the other day, does that inverter heat up so much or my DC to DC charger heat up so much that it has a negative effect basically in this in the bedroom up here? I haven't noticed it, honestly. So I've got this portable uh, thermometer here. I don't know how you say it, Govi, Govi, something like that. Uh, I carry this backpacking typically when the winter time to know how cold it is at night and what the humidity levels are um, so we can properly store our water bottles and things like that so they don't freeze at night or filter, specifically our filters. But I'm gonna put this inside this compartment here, let it get a baseline, and then later on today, I'll turn the inverter on and let it run for a couple hours and see what the temperature differences are. And I'll be back to report when I know. So I'm just hanging it right here on the light. So it's kind of midway in the department here. I have just turned on the inverter using the switch over here and I'm pulling out. It's been um, about 55 degrees on average for the last four hours up in the compartment. So it's stabilized up there and I've just turned on the inverter and I'll check it in one hour and then two hours and see how the heat's doing. So I've got everything in the rig turned on running off the battery right now. So we'll see how the inverter does. All right, up here in the front compartment, I've had the inverter running for about an hour. Maybe you can hear that on the video or not, but the fan and the inverter is on. The compartment, and I've got the temperature sensor right at the inverter. So it's the hottest part of the rig uh, with the inverter on is right here by this, by the where the temperature sensor is dangling here at the front. So it's, uh, about 10 degrees, maybe 11 degrees warmer after having the air conditioned heat pump running. And then I turned the heat pump off and I turned on the uh, Dyson heater. So I had wattage coming out of that. So I had two different modes. It got hotter with a Dyson heater than it did with the air conditioning up on the roof running. So uh, that mean it was putting out more, doing more work up here. So now I've got the regular power back on and it's cooling itself down and uh, we're back in normal operation. The compartment did not heat up near as much as I anticipated it going to. Um, I did not do a test of the DC to DC charger running uh, simply because that screen, that mesh screen, you might have noticed uh, in the wall there, separates those two compartments. Inside of the compartment where the DC to DC charger is, is also my solar controller and the Servo GX and the DC box and a number of other things so that it's about the same temperature in both those compartments which is why i hung the device there where i did because it's right next to that screen so any heat coming from either compartment is going to be about the same again 
surprised that it did not go more than the temperature that it did. One reason I believe that the inverter is able to keep as cool as it is is because I put it on a, some one inch aluminum square blocks underneath uh, on each side like a rail. So I set it on a rail system. So it has about a one inch gap underneath the system for air to flow all the way around it. And I did that on purpose so it would stay cooler or able to cool itself more uh, than if it were just flat. So I think that's helped out some too. And uh, thanks for the question and I look forward to any more that any of you out there have on anything else that we've done. Last night I put some new LED lights on the trailer. And Russ, thank you very much for your inspiration for us to do so. I saw his and saw some photos of it, really liked it. And it's something I've, I've thought about doing for a long time. So I ordered some from Amazon, really not sure how it was gonna go, but I put them on. Now, there's a thousand ways to do things out there in the world. This is the way I did it. And I'm gonna give you a basic overview of that and um, show you where they are and how they work and um, show you what I got from Amazon. So it's pretty cheap on Amazon to get to, I got two rolls, I got, uh, 30 feet so it's two strands that are 15 feet long and I put one on this side of the trailer and one on that side of the trailer and it runs up through the floor underneath the rig and I'll show you where that is in a moment but everything everywhere your like where your battery wires come through um, and then some other your your front nose jack power wire all that stuff goes up through the floor into a junction box right up here or it could be on that side of your trailer depending on what what style you have but in our old trailer, the front couch we had, everything was on that side, and this one is the front bed, so everything's on this side. So it really depends on the trailer you have as to where that is. But basically where your 12-volt DC junction box is, maybe your solar controller, maybe a few other things are in that, that area. But I didn't wire it into any of that. I wired it into something very, very simple. Up here in this front storage locker right there is a light, and it's a 12-volt light, and it's plugged up to a 12-volt set of wires right here, powered wires. And I just spliced into those wires and hooked them in with some Wagos. I got a three-pronged Wago, basically is what it is. And I have the old hot wire, the new hot wire, or the other half of the old hot wire, and then my 12-volt uh, LED light wire. So the little controller is on the floor there, and I'll show you what that looks like. But I can reach in there and push the button. It's got a remote control with it, and I leave the remote control up here with it but it also has a Bluetooth app that makes using it so much easy because I can just do it from anywhere and I don't have to point the remote at a thing and I can control it. I can set a timer with it. I can have it come on at a certain time of day and a certain time and go off a certain time of night and I can have whatever colors I want it to do. I can have it do anything. I can schedule all the stuff. So it's a pretty handy setup. It, it looks good. Like when you put the awning out and put the light over here on the porch, you have a light underneath. Uh, it looks pretty good to me. So uh, I, I checked out all the colors last night. We haven't really used it once it got super dark yet, because we it was cold out last night, so we didn't sit out here with it. But I think it'd be something fun in the summertime and just something gimmicky to have. It's cheap enough and easy enough for us to install. So let's go check out how we did it. Right in here is the light, and you can see that, that white wire coming off of it right there. Uh, those are the wires that I spliced into. Everything I spliced into is behind this cabinet because that hole in the floor is right behind here down in, the, down in the corner over there. So I spliced into everything right there. I put the switch right here in the floor. And the one wire coming off one side of that is to the power side. And the other two, or really three, two of them go down that's the two connectors for the two sides. And then your other side is for the infrared remote control sensor. So I'm down underneath the front nose. There's a nose jack, there's a battery box, spare tire. Here's the hole that comes through the floor. And again, yours may be on the other side. So what I have here are grounding wires, front nose jack wire and solar plug coming into here, power wires. They go up and through that hole. And then going back, Underneath the floor right here is your brake controller wire and your main battery terminal that goes back to the junction box back there. So coming out of there are the two wires for the LED lights. I ran it underneath the stabilizer here. 
and then it plugs together right there and I put some electrical tape on it just to keep it safe. And you can see the LED light and it just runs straight back all the way to the back. And I put it on the axles, so I'll go over and show you where I run it through there. So you can see the it's coming right here by the tank holder and then it just goes straight back into the where the wheels and the axles are attached and it's just all double sided tape and it just goes straight to the back to the terminal back there really if you're going to do this part you just need to be mindful to go over the top of the brake wire which is that gray wire right there that's the power to your brakes and then get everything clean before you do it one other thing on the other side of the rig where the sewer hookups and all that stuff are it can be a little bit more difficult to run beside the tanks what well, it's easy to get over the sewer pipes typically depending on the rig you have but getting between the tanks and the axle where they hook up there is, is a little harder because it's it's closer the tank the tank holder so the aluminum pan you see down there is not really your tank that's just what holds the tank inside of it the tank holder and the frame on the other side of the rig where the dump stations are because that's the angle coming down on those tanks. It's a little bit closer to the side than it is over here. So there's much more room over here. I can reach my whole hand in there, clean it off, but I had to use a paint paddle and a rag to get between uh, the, the wall of the tank holder and the frame on the other side to clean that off before I could stick that stuff up there. It's just a much closer gap in here than it is on the other side. I tried to put it as close to the edge here on that end of it but back here at the back because you have your jack pad i moved it over some and i kind of veered it in so it wouldn't be in the way of anything getting jacked up right here and i did the same on the other side and then you can see where the terminal ends right there and i put some little holders on there and taped up the end of that one hey one quick note just a stick, a sheet of these little stickers, um, cabinet bumpers, I think is what they're called, but they're little rubber grommets and you can see I pulled some of them off here, but they're little half moon type deal. Um, if you've noticed in your rig, they are in a few of the cabinets, bathroom door, cabinet doors, things like that. It, I recommend that you grab you a set of these they are pretty cheap from Amazon. I'll have a link down in the description down below, but um, they're very handy. And when you have a door that kind of rattles, particularly your bathroom door, maybe a closet door, something like that, um, these things come in really handy. And I'm gonna show you a couple examples. So on our pantry door, I have one on each corner here and, and one at the bottom on each corner so that when it shuts, it stays and doesn't rattle around. I also have them on these doors here. This latch is pretty tight, but this gives it a little extra to hold in there tight. And where it really comes into play is your bathroom door. Many of you may have experience. You can do this with your bathroom door and it rattles. What I have done is I put one here, one here, one here in the middle, one here and one down there. So I have four on this door to keep it tight and it doesn't rattle. So that's a worthwhile purchase. They're pretty cheap again. Uh, get you some of those cabinet bumpers. thermometer slash it does all the things but pepper's pooping i gotta go pick it up <laughs> that's probably not the <laughs> angle you should put on right there television <laughs>